Drones have come to define the war in Ukraine, with both sides making prolific use of them for observation and ordnance delivery. Both sides have struggled to find adequate countermeasures, with everything from fishing nets to anti-drone guns, and from cope cages to complex electronic warfare jammers that disrupt UAV frequencies over larger areas. The threat to individual soldiers has become increasingly serious, with many units resorting to pressing sporting shotguns into service. However, not every combatant can carry a shotgun, and a number of companies, engineers and fabricators have turned their attention to providing soldiers with a cheap, mass-manufacturable and effective weapon which can be issued to individual soldiers en masse. In this video, we'll look at one of the efforts from a Russian company called Ingra. Ingra have developed an adapter that converts a GP25 40mm underbarrel grenade launcher into a single shot, 12 gauge shotgun. On the 13th of April, Ingra announced Friends, the Ingra company has created a new unparalleled device, Rozhyanka, for the destruction of quadcopters. The testing stage has been completed. Rozhyanka changes the caliber of the underbarrel grenade launcher to fire a 12 gauge hunting cartridge with an effective range of 15 to 30 meters. The tests carried out show the reliability, safety and efficiency of the device. We've reached the next stage, which is the production of a pre-production batch for testing by the troops. Our task is to fulfill the troops with the Rozhyanka product in a short time. Later the same day, they shared their first videos demonstrating the adapter. In the first video, the adapter is shown being loaded with a 12 gauge cartridge and then inserted into a GP25, just as the grenade would be. A second short video shows the adapter being used to shoot down a commercial quadcopter drone. On their Telegram channel, the company posted a pair of photographs showing targets shot with an adapter at 30 meters. They claim 5 millimeters of penetration, but don't mention the length of the adapter's barrel. From one of the photographs Ingra shared, it appears that the Rozhyanka was developed in three barrel lengths, estimated to range between 2 and 5 inches in length. On around the 5th of May, the company released a slicker video demonstrating the adapter. The design appears simple, it has interfaces that allow it to be loaded and held in the GP25's barrel. Once inserted, this aligns the cartridge, which is loaded into the adapter's breech, with the GP25's firing pin. To unload the adapter has to be released from the launcher by depressing the grenade release catch. Then the spent case is manually extracted from the adapter and a new cartridge is loaded. The video also shows a rear sight adapter which is fitted to aid aiming the weapon. On the 10th of May I spoke to one of the company's representatives before the adapter had been launched on the company's website. He explained that it would be available soon and that it would cost around 12,000 rubles or $130. On the 14th of May the adapter was launched on Ingra's website at a lower than expected cost of 9,300 rubles or $102. The adapter is currently listed as unavailable on Ingra's website, but posts on the company's social media urge interested parties to contact them directly to order. In a video shared on the 13th of May, Ingra demonstrated the operation of the adapter and also noted that it is compatible with the GP25, GP30 and GP34 pattern grenade launchers. Ingra's website provides some specifications and confirms that the adapter is only available in one barrel length, rather than the three previously seen. The adapter is 250mm or 9.8 inches long, and weighs in at 340 grams or 12 ounces. The manufacturer states that it has an effective range of between 15 and 35 meters, that's 50 to 115 feet against a target with a 500mm or 19.6 inch cross section. The adapter can be used with 2 and 3 quarter and 3 inch loads and has a warranty for up to 100 rounds of the Siberia 32 gram number 3 12 gauge which is Ingra's recommended load. The adapter comes with instructions, a rear sight adapter and a small pouch. On the 16th of May, Ingra shared another range video featuring a Russian combatant trying out the adapter against a floating balloon. 
the adapter is being used in a GP25 mounted on an AKMS with a PBS-1 suppressor. The combatant testing the adapter notes the importance of seating the cartridge fully in the breech and keeping your hands clear of the muzzle in case of accidental discharge. He suggests having the GP25 on safe to avoid an accidental discharge, hinting that one may have occurred earlier. He also demonstrates using a rod to push the Sven cartridge case out of the adapter's breech. Now the adapters are available, it remains to be seen if and when we'll see them in use in the field with Russian troops. The system is clearly well thought out, simple to manufacture and potentially fairly effective at under 40 meters. It adapts a readily available infantry weapon to a pressing new role and may also have some close quarter anti-personnel applications. It undoubtedly provides the operator with a means of engaging a drone, but it also has drawbacks. The reloading process is comparatively slow, meaning that the user is likely to only have one chance to engage a drone if it's one of the faster FPVs, and is unlikely to otherwise match a conventional shotgun in terms of reload times when firing at drones engaged in munitions dropping or observation. It also means that the Grenadier has to choose what to have loaded ready in his GP25 in various situations. The limited availability of underbarrel grenade launchers in general also means that depending on the unit, only one soldier per squad is likely to have the ability to use the adapter. Thanks for watching guys, this is the first in a series of videos looking at some other adapters that are being developed and also a general look at the use of shotguns in the conflict. Don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. Sharing the videos with friends really helps the channel to grow as we fast approach 100,000 subscribers. Thank you for that. If you'd like to, you can support us via Patreon and of course the History of Weapons and War app. There's links to find out more about those in the description box below. Thanks again, catch you next time.